Welcome back to another exciting edition of Random Today, the chemistry edition. Alright, so in today's lab, what we're going to be looking at is how to use a Bunsen burner. And the reality of it is, this is the main burner y'all are going to be using, and it's actually not even theoretically a Bunsen burner. Now, don't get me wrong, I mispronounce it. It's like a Turrell burner, T-I-R-R-E-L. I usually call it a Tyrell burner just because of my lack of ability to pronounce things. But anyway, if you call it a Bunsen burner, it doesn't matter. Although it's technically not a Bunsen burner. But anyway, this is the number one burner y'all will use. And the reason why is they get hotter than the other burners, the little burners do. So let's talk about how to use these burners a little bit. All right, what do you need to have fire? You need two things. You need air, and you also need gas. gas. So you need gas and air, and the mixture of gas and air is where you get the fire. So that means a burner has to be able to control gas and air. Now make sure you're paying attention to this. I got two things here. There's a valve on the bottom, and you can see this valve, it'll screw in and it'll screw out. Righty tighty, lefty loosey on the valve. I usually want the valve open a little bit. You don't have to open it too far. Although I will give you say this. I don't know if we can see it on that video. But there's a rubber gasket. If at any point you can see the rubber gasket down here, guess what? That means it's going to start happening. You pulled it out too far? Yes. And that means gas will start leaking. We do not want gas leaking in the lab or we're using fire. So I'm going to screw this back in because I do not want to see that. Matter of fact, I'm going to screw it all the way in. I'm going to back it out like one turn, and that's probably enough gas to get going. And I'll be honest, most of the time, y'all never mess with those. Once you get one of these set to where you like it, most of y'all <coughs> never twist one of those valves again. So you need gas, and what's the other thing you need? Air. air. This one's got a crap load of air getting into it. Can I say crap load on TV? Oh, it's a Turkford channel. Who cares? Anyway, you can see all the air that's getting up into here. I'm going to close the air off of this burner. And you can tell the air is closed off because you can't see into it anymore. So if you twist it open and you can see through it, then you're getting air. If you don't want air, close it down. And I say this because it's always easier to light without air. But I'm going to show you a way of cheating in a second. So I'm going to make sure that this hose is seated. Now, some of y'all get crazy and y'all like... Rrr and really squeeze this thing. Don't get crazy with it. If you push this thing on too tight, I'll literally have to take a knife to cut the thing off, then you just ruin that gas line. So anyway, you wanna make sure it's on, but not like killed. And the same thing, when you go to put it on over here, it's the same idea. You want it on, you'll judge and feel it, that you've got it on. Usually there'll be one goofball every year that comes in here like, it shall not leak. And next thing you know, I got a pocket knife over here trying to cut the thing off of it. So anyway, I've got it set up. Now, how do you know that your gas is on at the table? Any ideas? Gas on. How do you turn the gas on? Give you a hint, this is off. When it's at 90 degrees, it's off. So if you want to turn the gas on, turn the valve so it does what? Points in the same direction as the nozzle. Which means it doesn't matter if it's left or right, either way is off. To turn the gas on, it needs to go where? Straight ahead, okay? Are we good? All right, so how do we light the burner? Well, let's take a second and look at sparker strikers for a second too. You need to make sure before any of you start using the burners that you can actually use a striker. Some of y'all will be sitting here doing this and making no sparks. I'll give you a hint. If you can't make a spark, you're not going to light a burner. What should this thing look like? Sparky. It should be making sparks. Now where some of y'all kind of mess up is you don't understand, you actually have to put pressure into this thing when you strike it. Some of you may have to do the little underhanded technique, like, like that. You got to put pressure though. You can't just sit here on some of them and rub it. That won't do something. You actually have to press the flint in against something. So what happens if you get a striker that absolutely will not make a spark? It means the little black piece of flint is probably gone. This one's got a good piece of flint. So what do you do if you get one without a flint? Change it. Pour out. Go, Mr. Cole, can I have a new piece of flint? And I don't have to do this. I will give you the flint. The flints just screw off, and you just take the new one and screw it right back on. 
screw on your new piece of flint and usually this striker will be good and ready to go at that point. That's what you want to see is a good spark out of it. Make sure you can do this when you start doing the lab. So lighting the burner is easy. I got some gas on. If you ain't sure that the gas is on coming through your burner, just do this. Stick your ear up. Make sure you're not smoking. <laughs> and when you open it, you'll hear gas come through the burner at that point. And so I know that this burner is ready to light. The air should be what when you're getting ready to off. light? Off. So I got no air getting to this. So now we'll come back. I'm going to open the gas valve. Woo, fire. Now I'm actually going to get a little bit more gas in the bottom. I want a little bit more flame than that. Now look at that flame. What do you notice about it? It's it's putting on black. It's smoke. red, yeah. red, red, and it will be making black smoke. You put a test tube in that, it'll turn it black. Seth, would you turn off the uh, lights in here for a second? Yes, we'll turn them back on. Thank you, sir. And so now we can see this good red flame. I don't want a red flame. That's a bad flame. Blue. So open up the air. I need air. Oh. What I want is this. You can even hear the flame a little bit. That's a good flame. This is what your flames are supposed to look like. Blue flames. Now I want you to notice that there's two flames here, kind of. One inside and one outside. One inside and one outside. All right, not bad. Now, you're going to hear me different times this year. I'm going to say heat something cool or even heat gently or something like that. This part up here is the coolest part of the flame up in here. The hottest part of the flame, if I tell you cook it, I mean get it hot, hot. That inner blue tip in there is the hottest part of this flame. That's the hot spot. So if you ever want to get something hot, you stick it down there in that blue flame down in there. All right, has anybody got a question so far? Are we doing good? Now, again, oop, too much air. By the way, guess what happens if you get too much air? It goes you out. hear it? You hear how it's getting really loud? If it's getting too much air, it'll just poof, it'll go out. So that means if you have problems with your burner staying lit, it's getting too much air. So I'm going to close it back down. Again, that means... Not enough air. Not enough air. So get it to where you get that blue flame. I like to make sure I've got that good blue tip in there, and that means i got a good flame. Now, a lot of times when you're doing the lab, you're lighting and relighting your burners a lot. So one of the things you can kind of do to speed it up maybe not necessarily some people's style. I don't like having to recheck this air every time because some labs you'll relight your burner like 20 times a lab. That's a pain in the rear end to constantly redo that. So what you can do to set your burner is this. To light it we need air or don't need air? Don't. Don't need air. Put your so hand what I'll over. do is this. I'll take my hand and wrap it around and cut the air off. And then I can let go and bam, I've got my flame right where I like it. So this, thank you, you like that technique? And by the way, it probably just looks cool. So if you ever end up somewhere lighting the burner one day, you can go, hey, hold on, let me show you. And I've got a flame ready to go at that point. I know, I make it look good, don't I? Thank you. It's because I have the jacket on. Anyway, this again, this is the burner y'all will use the most. Now, it's not the only burner in the lab. I like using these because they get, they get hot enough you can boil water and stuff in a hurry. Some other types of burners. All right. Some people will call this one. I'm going to unplug it. This one, I guess, is probably a really a Bunsen burner. It's not a full Bunsen burner. I don't really like these too much. There's no gas control on them. If you notice, there's no valves on them at all. The only thing it's got is this little metal loop. And if you really look at it close... Can you see it close? There's a little metal thingy on here and you can open it and you can see air. Again, if I want to light it though, the air needs to be what? Off. Uh, air needs to be off. So I'm going to close it and same thing. I'm going to do something. I'm going to make sure that it is working. Yeah, it's good to go. Sometimes y'all drip stuff down in there and they don't work. So I'm going to open the gas. And if you notice, I'm not in a huge hurry this time because this one's... By the way, what's wrong with it? It's, it has, it has air. air. Too much air. It's a real frame. Turn off the light again. Let's look at this one. Take a 
wild guess why I would not use this burner for much. Because it's very, very, very it's a little on the puny side. Uh, I don't have a lot of use for it. If you tried to boil water on this, you're going to be sitting here for 50 minutes trying to boil water. So I wouldn't go that route with it. So I'm going to turn this guy off. Now, lights back on. Yes. Hi. Give me another one. Now, ah, now this one is a true deal Bunsen burner. And probably this is the burner most schools are using looks like this. And if you notice, it looks almost identical to that one. Do you notice the only thing that really looks different? It has another valve. This one has a little needle valve on the side. In the history of Ranburn High School, there's only been two accidents ever using burners. And that ain't bad, because this is like 15, 16 years I've been teaching these things. Both accidents that have ever happened with burners have happened because of these Bunsen burners. And I'm going to screw this thing out, and you'll notice something. You see that rubber gasket you can see. Mm -hmm. If you can see the rubber gasket, that means gas will be leaking out of it at that point. Do not be able, and look, you can completely take the valve out. That's not good at all. So I'm going to screw this valve back in so I can't see it. This one's actually froze. I can't adjust the air on it, which means to light it, I'm going to do the little trick down here. By the way, if you have one that sucks the flame back in, just shut your gas off. I don't know if I can get this one where I want it or not because of, see how it's blowing itself out? Ah, you little. <laughs> I don't know if I'll get this one lit. Ow. <laughs> By the way, if you're wondering what's really wrong with this one, This is bad for a video guy. There. There we can get it lit. If you want to know what's really wrong, bring the camera over and get it close. Look at the top of this burner. What do you notice? It's rusted. It's corrosion all over it. Y'all have dripped chemicals into the burner. Can I ask you, try to not get chem... Don't set the camera on fire, okay, dude? Oh, just Thank looking. you. Bad, Blake. All right. So anyway, and it goes out instantly. Here, I'll go ahead and tell you, though, the two accidents... You I was trying to look in the top. Okay. Oh, yeah, all right. The two accidents that have happened, though, both times have been what happens with these, when this needle gets out too far, it will shoot a three-foot flame out the side of the burner. Really? Yep. We had a student who's now a state trooper over in Georgia one time. We were back in the old high school, and sure enough, it shot a flame right back out on them, which it's not going to hurt. It's going to be a very dilute flame. It shot a flame out. He jumped back so hard he busted the glass in the old school. That kind of sucked. About three years ago, we had some students sitting at this table right here doing a lab, and theirs did the same thing. It shot a three-foot-long flame out the back of it. It was a group of three girls. Two of them basically tucked, ducked, and rolled. They were, like, gone. Thankfully, one of the students actually was smart enough to know what to do in the event of a burner malfunction. Turn the gas off. It's amazing. As dangerous as the burner looks, the second you shut the gas off, problem is solved. So I was very happy that one of the three students, at least, that were over here had the sense to shut the gas off instead of just letting a three foot long flame blow out the side of the What do I do? Shut off the gas. Now, let's get this burner out. Why is it leaning? Why is the burner leaning? It's because one of you did something stupid. The burners stay over here beside Lock Logan in these drawers. Matter of fact, same drawer on the other side of the lab, you will find burners in them. Y'all, sometimes these burners get in there and they get twisted. If you cannot open the drawer, take your hand, reach in, and try to turn the burners down that's catching it. Guess what somebody did there? Uh, Until they got the drawer open by ripping the top out of a $30 burner. Okay. So, have we kind of got that understood? Yes. By the way, don't put the burners back in the drawer until they're cooled off, or you could burn down the entire school. Is that also something? I burned my hand last period on that guy. Now, i got a couple more little burners. So we've looked at all the Bunsen burners. We've looked at one that somebody wrecked. We've looked at this little bitty guy. 
I'm not even going to hook him up. You can probably guess. He Have you noticed, though, the principle is the same with yeah, all of... Yeah, you must be tomorrow. Make sure that you're here by 7.45. Make sure you have your ticket. Print it out before you get here. And a driver's license or another... I'm glad. ID. Yeah, I'm glad. Thanks. Now that we know all about the ACT tomorrow, let's get on with this. I'm going to got one more burner here. And you can probably already start guessing. Hey, that guy looks sexy. Well, let's go ahead and hook him up. Do you know the same principle as this guy? He's got a valve on the bottom. You got air on the sides. To light the burner, the air needs to be off. off. Well, that's as off as you can make it with this one. So I'm going to do the same thing. Open, light, and that's bam. So cool. Now this one, we can give it a little bit more heat to it. We can open up the air. And you can listen to a burner and tell if it's misbehaving. By the way, if you're wondering what that orange is, somebody has dripped chemicals onto it. Please try not to drip chemicals on it. Y'all's next lab is to burn chemicals and see what color they burn. It's very hard to tell what color something burns when you've turned your whole burner orange. Because you're like, is it orange? I don't know. Everything's orange right now. But anyway, this is your next lab that you're going to be doing. Is literally holding chemicals over a flame and seeing what they do. Anyway, this one is kick butt hot. And if you're wondering why it's so hot, see if you can figure it out. Look at what this one's done down in there. You notice something? It's like vented out of the flame. Instead of having one blue tip, do you notice something? Yeah, it's, it's actually gritty. about 35 or 40 blue tips. This thing is really, really hot right down in there. I mean, this thing is hot, hot. About three of these go and the whole lab gets hot at some point. This is called a meeker burner, though. and We don't use them a lot. The only time we need them is if we need something really, really hot. And I got one more burner. We'll strike it up and stick it in over here. Matter of fact, go ahead and shut the lights off for this one. You can tell it looks very similar to a meter burner and I got a reason why I'm sliding it over there. Thanks. You should be safe. Ah. 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 If you're wondering why I slid it over there, there's a fire sprinkler here and I really didn't want to get wet right now. If you're looking at this one going I think something's wrong. You're right. Something okay. is wrong. There's a hole. And it's not that. Uh, this burner is made for natural gas. We are not using natural gas in here. We are using, take a while, guess, Hank Hill. Propane. Propane. Propane and propane accessories. That is a natural gas burner, and that's why it does not behave right. So if ever in your life you're in a chem lab somewhere and you see this little thing going on, you can instantly know, hey, we've got the wrong burner. So let's extinguish this one's light before we like melt the school or something like that. So we should never be using this burner. We'll be going back into a cabinet where it will be locked up for the rest of the year so that none of you ever actually grab it. So to light the burner, we need... Air shut off. We need the air shut off. Then we get our gas on. Here's the biggest thing y'all see y'all doing that's really stupid. I will look over and y'all will be going, gas is turned on, and you're going. You just keep going. You're striking and striking. The gas is on. And I'm going to give you a hint. You're making a bomb. If the gas is on and you're striking, and you're not lighting, that means gas is just coming and coming and coming. And eventually, if you do accidentally get a spark, you're going to knock your eyebrows off your face. I'm going to be honest. I believe in learning by doing the old FFA motto. So if I look over and Sibley is over there, I'm going to watch him. I will be watching you nonstop. And I'm going to be watching Sibley like Sibley's about to blow himself up. Here's the thing. I'm going to make a judgment. If I think it's just to the point that all it's going to do is singe his hair, I may let Logan singe his hair a little bit. Because I know from then on he won't screw up ever again when it comes to a burner. Now if I judge he's about to blow himself up, I will scream, Look at that! That should look good on YouTube, shouldn't it? But anyway... Y'all, use some sense. If you've been trying to light this for a few seconds and it ain't lit, shut the gas off, fan it out, and stop what you're doing, alright?
don't sit there until you make a big fireball around yourself at some point. Anyway, all right, so you got it? Yeah. Yes, we do. All right.